Greetings and salutations everybody, my name is Maya the King and today we're doing a first impressions review on a little indie game that came out yesterday on Steam called Rising Lords. Rising Lords is a medieval turn-based strategy game with card and board game elements. Send your serfs to fight and die in your name or let them prosper and use them to your advantage. This game was developed by Argonwood and this is either the first game they've ever made or it's their first game up on Steam. So that's how the game describes itself pretty much and if you were to take it at face value then yeah that's pretty much exactly what you're getting it's pretty much just trying to get serfs to generate in your kingdom and then send them off to do your bidding whether that's chores fighting or whatever else you choose they have to do it now I played this game for a little over an hour so I have a pretty deep idea of what this game is and I'm pretty sure I've seen everything it has to offer and I have got a good idea of what it's meant to be at least in the long run it's exactly like it it's described it's a board game. I mean, it, it has card elements, and it has some strategy elements, but if you really want to break it down into its most basic form, it's a board game. So, if you're looking for a new board game to play with some buddies, then you found a pretty interesting one here. But allow me to state early on that this game isn't early access, even though on the Steam Store page it isn't registered as early access. So, as always, let us go into the good and bad, followed by my overall impressions, and then my not-so-official rating and then my closing thoughts. First up we're gonna go with the good. The game does have an interesting style to it. I like how it's kind of like a board game and clearly has some of the appeal that a lot of those kinds of board games have. You know the ones I'm talking about. Like Axis and Allies kind of stuff. But here it has animations and music and sounds and a lot of stuff that some board games just can't really get across. So it's kinda of nice. The game is fairly simple and pretty easy to learn which is good because you're gonna have to teach yourself how to play. The style is nice, and the idea and originality behind it is also pretty nice. Along with the sounds and the graphics, it's all just very pleasant and work really well together. Now that I got all the good out of the way, we go on to the bad. The game is too simple. There, I said it. It took me three matches, each one lasting about ten minutes, before I finally figured out how to play the game. But it's simply too simple. Simple as that. Have I said simple enough yet? I kept expecting there to be differences, strategies, or other ways of approaching certain things, maybe even solving a problem or two that rises up in your kingdom, but no, none of that. It's just do this, do that, watch results, rinse, repeat. It's also got a lot of waiting around and watching, if I didn't make that clear enough. So if you intend to play this game, make sure that you're in a place or playing in a way that allows you to watch TV or YouTube videos, like mine. The Steam Store page describes this as having cards in it and having a card based style into the game is part of what it's advertised as. But the cards you see and that you utilize in the game are, well, just that. They're very poorly utilized and they're only used in battle. They're unexplained and since they have such a small effect on the overall game, they almost shouldn't even be mentioned. I mean, at least in my opinion. I mean, it's so small in the game that why even bother mentioning it? It's a very minuscule thing to where most people would just see the cards and go, oh, well, that's interesting, and then move on. But if you're trying to advertise this towards people who are looking for a more card-based RPG, they're going to be very disappointed. Just saying. The next thing is that the AI is a little bit unpredictable. Now, this can usually be considered a good or a bad thing based on the circumstances. But what I mean is, unless you know exactly how to play, or you have a specific strategy, or you made the game when you start playing, the AI, the AI is, is going to dominate you every single time. Which brings me to my next negative. The game has no tutorial. I'm going to get a, a gif and a, and a sound bite and I'm going to get a fancy special effect and it just, it's going to be like a volcano exploding while the angry motion from inside out goes flying out in the hundreds of thousands yelling the F word every freaking time I find a game that doesn't have a freaking tutorial in it. It's starting to become comical at this point. It's like someone hates me and keeps doing this on purpose. Don't get me wrong though. It has a tutorial video on YouTube that they want you to go visit for whatever reason. But to me, that doesn't count. It's not the same. You won't have all the answers because you won't have all of our questions because we're playing the game. When I got into this game, I don't want to be dragged away from it to watch some video explaining the gameplay to me. If that's what I wanted, I wouldn't even be doing this freaking video right now. I mean, it's my job to help people learn and understand games. These guys are taking that away from me. Just 
give me a damn tutorial, it's not that hard. Just give me a list of rules on how to play the game, give me something. Just don't give me a freaking video that takes me out of the game to learn how to play the game while I'm still in the freaking game. I'm so sick of people not putting tutorials in their games, so that automatically gets this game a negative point and just inches me one step close to the edge of making that horrifying gif of anger and explosions and foul language and noises that just alerts every time there's no tutorial in the game. I'm going to be like, it's the no tutorial alert, and I'm going to pull a freaking lever and it's going to go Rrr! and just all crazy stuff is going to happen all over the place and it's going to be, it's going to be awesome and cool and disturbing all at the same time. <sighs> okay, got that out of my system. Case in point, with the previous thing that I just said, uh, if you could ignore all the random rambling. Okay, so basically this is how it goes. You start off with six serfs. Each one can be assigned to a plot of land in your kingdom. Each plot does something different, like harvesting stone, wood, food, etc. Each turn they gain resources. In some plots you have to clear debris so you can plant a field, or you can choose to build attachments to your city, which will also need a surf on that plot so he can build it. You can kind of see from the gameplay here what I'm talking about, at least I hope. You have a population, of course, and each surf you get on the map is generated per 250 people in your kingdom. As your population grows, you get more serfs, which can be put to more chores. If you make an army and they die, your population obviously goes down and you lose serfs. Create a thriving kingdom with this mechanic. Expand your city, build an army, conquer enemy kingdom, rinse, repeat until you're the only one left. There. That's the gameplay. Here's a hint in case you still want to play, by the way. In case you, this, you still want to support these guys, you still like the idea, you want to play it. Okay, here's, here's a little strategy that I learned early on. Put a surf on each animal farm, alright? So that's two, normally. Use the rest to clear the debris around your main capital city, alright? Turn all of these extra plots into wheat farms and keep them manned, alright? This is going to keep your people fed. Then, build a blacksmith and use the blacksmith to build weapons and armor so you can keep building an army. Once that's done, defend your lands from the enemy kingdoms until you are ready, and then you can invade the enemy, invade their city, take it, your territory doubles, rinse, repeat, until you win the game. Okay? Alright. The next damn thing that irritated me is the mechanics of the game, overall. Like, for instance, the game doesn't really tell you how much food you have. I mean, it does tell you how much wheat, horses, cows, and sheep you have, but Cows give you milk, which it says feeds your people, but I wasn't seeing any indication of that. Sheep give you wool, nothing for food. You don't have any horses in the beginning. So, it, it, it the thing is, it doesn't really explain how much you use or lose depending on different situations. And the game starts you off with an animal farm and a bunch of animals, but not a wheat farm, but you have a bunch of wheat. So even though the game automatically starts you out with eating your wheat and not your animals, you either lose all your animals by switching to wheat, by switching your plot from an animal farm to a wheat farm, but that's going to kill your animals. Or you can lose all your animals by choosing to eat them. You have to clear away brushes with serfs to unlock another farm so you can build wheat if you don't want to lose all your animals, and you better do it quick before your people start to leave your kingdom, which they will do if they're not happy. So, do you understand? Kind of go what's go you gotta get what's going on here? Yes? No? Yeah. Exactly. Along that same vein, there is a health meter in this game, which pretty much describes the levels of healthiness your people are experiencing with each turn. But does the game explain in any way how to make your health go up? Nope. But it will tell you why it's going down. Even if you have none of the things that are making it go down, it will tell you these are the typical things that make it go down. You don't have any. It's going down. But that, that's how it's supposed to go down. Even your people's happiness isn't explained very well. I mean, you give them extra food and you lower their taxes, right? That obviously makes them happy, that makes their, their happiness go up. But when their happiness is at max, you can drop down to half rations, which I did, and triple their taxes, which I did, and the happiness still was not going down. So what the hell is up with that? I don't know, cause there wasn't a tutorial, and I refuse to go visit that stupid tutorial video on principle alone. I have never, in all my years of video games, never have I ever played a game where the tutorial was a link to a video that you had to watch. I have never seen that before. It's just lazy. It's so freaking lazy to do it that way. And it's gonna 
turn off a lot of your potential customers who are trying to get into this game, trying to learn it, only to realize the only way to learn it is to go watch someone else play it. That's no fun. Do you guys not understand what the idea of a tutorial is? The idea of a tutorial is to let you play the game, experience the game, and learn the game through baby steps so you become more familiar with it, so it's more obvious, so things start to click. If you tell someone to leave your game to go watch a video of you playing it and then you just explain to them what things are, they're going to become disjointed, they're going to become disconnected, they're going to become bored, and they're just going to feel like it's not worth it. It puts a bad taste in their mouth right off the bat, and you don't want that. So game devs, if you watch this video, please take down that video, or rather, put in a tutorial, and after you put in the tutorial, please take down the video, okay? It's a really bad idea. Maybe some people appreciate it, but for me, I think it's really ridiculous that I have to leave my game to learn about my game, okay? That's just me. Give me a tutorial. I'm sick of these runarounds that all these devs are trying to do. Just give me a freaking tutorial, all right? <sighs> Look, all I'm saying is give me an in-game tutorial, and most of these problems would be solved. I mean, that's pretty much exactly it. I mean, if there had been an in-game tutorial, or at least a list of rules that this game, you know, goes by, it, all these, all these different things, all, all these, all these different ideas and, and, and concepts of the game, I mean, I, I probably would have been able to play it just fine with all this. With, with just those two things added, I probably would have been able to play it and, and maybe even gotten some fun out of it, or at least know what to expect when I jumped in. But even if you take out all those things I mentioned, the game just still isn't sitting right with me. First off, there's, there really is just a whole lot of turn passing as you wait to generate resources. The combat they have in this game has, leaves a lot to be desired, let me tell you. And the skill system, I mean, it's, it's okay, I suppose, but it's not really explained at all like anything else. I mean, does my guy gain levels or not? I, I have no freaking clue. I don't even know who my guy is. I can only see him when I summon an army, so why does it matter? Why do I care about him? Overall, the combat was boring, and when I realized this, I just let the AI do my fighting for me. It was faster and simpler, and pretty much had a better chance of winning than I did, since I didn't know how to play. The enemy AI seemed to have bountiful amounts of resources, and even when you put them on different game modes, like, like, okay, by different game modes I mean like different personalities for the AI, like are they aggressive or passive, uh, they, they still end up coming at you in the exact same way. I'm, okay, here's an example. Uh, they've got like four different modes, I think. It's like uh, Prosperity, Nightly, Aggressive, and Passive, right? So I put two of them on Prosperity and one of them on Nightly. But the one on Nightly acted aggressively, and the two on Prosperity pretty much also acted aggressively because they kept attacking each other. It just didn't really make any sense at all and makes me think that the whole personality thing is just a, a sham and doesn't really mean anything. Oh, and by the way, that AI on Nightly personality mode ended up winning the whole game, by the way. Did I say by the way twice? I don't know. I don't care. The game just, it look, it just this seems really annoying and boring to me. I, and I, I mean, it's annoying because no matter what I did, it seemed like I couldn't keep up with the AI. Even after I spent a lot of time learning the game, after that first half hour, I kind of had a good idea. So when I went into it for that fourth game, I had a good idea of what I was doing. And I was playing the game the way I felt it needed to be played, but it didn't matter. The AI still came at me with a massive army. I beat him back somehow using all my armor, which, by the way, if I, game devs, if I create an army, right, and I give them swords, armor, shields, and everything else so I can have pikemen, swordsmen, archers, and peasants, right, and I've got like 400 men, and I beat the enemy, and I've still got men left, and then I tell them to disband, why the hell do I lose those weapons? Why don't they come back? If I'm giving them to them, and they're not going to come back with the weapons already when I summon them again, why don't they give the weapons back? That's something that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, be careful how you spend your resources, your armor and weapons and stuff, because as soon as you use them, they're gone, people. I don't know. So that that's part of the reason why it was super annoying to me. And, by the way, after I beat that AI, and my army was basically weakened and battered and bruised and bloody, and I had no time to regain anything or build anything back, the guy came back in with another army, squashed me, killed me, game over. And... It was boring because most of the time, for the hour I was playing, I was just sitting there and staring at the game, clicking next turn over and over again, while every now and then a little card pops up and it says, hey, there's a problem happening. Oh, okay, well, what can I do? Can I do anything about it? Can I, can I uh, research something, move troops somewhere, move peasants somewhere? Is there anything I can do? No. Nope. We just wanted to let you know that there's a problem coming. Great. 
What do I do when the problem gets here? Who knows? We'll see. Let's see if it gets here. And then nothing ever happened. Like that happened like a dozen times to me. So I just realized I just started clicking out of those cards, just dismissing them because they don't mean jack. And another thing, the diplomacy is broken. I try, you know, using diplomacy to deal with the other computers and the other AIs to try to see if they'll talk with me, trade with me, make peace with me, because they declare war on you for no reason at the very beginning. I mean, they say it's a diplomatic strategy game, but it's it's not. It's bullcrap. So there, there's no way to make things work with them, at least not when I played it. So that was really annoying. So they just everyone declares war on you as soon as you start, and they get armies way before you can and just crush you. So, you know, these are things that made me bored and annoyed with the game. I spend most of my time sitting there clicking next turn, waiting, watching absolutely nothing happen. And then when something finally does happen, it's pretty much game over because another enemy attacked me with resources I couldn't achieve in the same amount of time. Which doesn't make any sense at all. I, d d not, I mean, okay, look, let's take a step back. Don't get me wrong. The game feels, looks, and sounds great. But the inner mechanics of the gameplay feel wrong. It's like the game is just hard for the sake of being hard, not due to any circumstances created within the game. Like, the game was simply meant to be difficult, whether or not you had any influence at all. I mean, overall, with everything, I think this game is, is very average. If you have a few buddies and you all want to get together and play this, then I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun. Probably exactly the kind of thing you could sit down and play and just chill for a couple of hours as you mess with each other and whatnot. But if you're like me, and your friends are too busy for games, and you play alone, this game is something you should definitely pass on. I don't have to give this game a rating, because it's not a deep dive review, but if I had to give it a rating based on my hour of gameplay, I'd give it a 5, as of right now, in its early access stage, even though on Steam it doesn't say early access. It's just an average game. Is it currently worth its asking price of $20? Hell no! I think this game is worth 10 right now, maybe 15 when it's fully released, if some of those things they advertise on the Steam page actually get released into the game, and it becomes a bit more of an RPG strategy diplomacy game, then yeah, maybe, maybe it's worth $15. But currently, it doesn't have enough content to inspire me to spend the $20, especially if it's a game meant to be played with friends, which it seems like it is, and I don't have friends. I mean, I do, but they're too busy. Now. Of course, all of this is subject to change, I want to go ahead and say that so people don't yell at me for being early access, but as of right now, the game plays bad, it feels unfinished and broken, and it just overall seems rather boring. But I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, if you like staring at a screen where you end your turn over and over again until you have resources, only to then have an overpowered AI storm your castle and ruin your game, then this might be right up your alley. But if you have two or three friends and want to get together and chill on a harmless medieval-like board game, then this is, without sarcasm, definitely something you're looking for. Alright everybody? So that's all the time I got for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I helped some of you save some money, and I hope to see you all again on my next adventure. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I bid you farewell.